let's go ahead and install TensorFlow onto Windows with GPU support or without GPU support. We're going to talk about both. So when you're looking at how to install TensorFlow into Windows, you're going to be on this page here on TensorFlow, and I've got a link to this down in the description. But let's look at what our options are as of March 2023. So Windows native, these used to be supported. TensorFlow is kind of throwing up their hands on this one and saying, yeah, we're giving up. So no more native installs of the GPU in Windows. So you can't run the GPU just straight up in Windows from the command line like you used to, at least not the Windows command line. If you want to use GPU support, what you're going to need to do here is follow these steps and I'll let you know some of the gotchas. You're going to have to put it into WSL2, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. First of all, WSL2, this will work if you have CPU. It'll simply just not use your GPU. And if you do it with the GPU and you're running into problems, that's what it's going to do too. It's just going to not use your GPU and that'll be frustrating, but we'll talk about that. Also, I am using Windows 11. Windows 11 makes some of this a lot easier with the native driver support. I suggest using Windows 11 for this, this kind of thing. I no longer have computers running Win 10, so I can't really, I'm not really going to do videos on that. I'm moving on. So the very first thing that you want to do is install the NVIDIA driver. Also, I focus primarily on NVIDIA. I don't have AMD technology. AMD technology is not real common in the cloud, and so it's it's just not an area that I focus upon. And it's, it's a more complex path. It's not supported as well in the machine learning thing, and I'm all about the path of least resistance. Now my GPU, which went in video, was awesome to provide for this video is an NVIDIA RTX 6000 ADA generation. Really any GPU that is shown here is, is going to work. Just the 40 series is certainly going to be faster than the 30, which is faster than the 20 and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and search and we shall download it. Agree and download. I'll fast forward to this. Depends on your connection speed, how long this takes. Okay, it is running. I'll say yes. Okay, it's installing. I'm gonna have to stop my recording because we are modifying the video driver. So the driver is now installed. So we're back here on the WSL2. Now, what you're gonna have to do before you hop into any of this is you need to install WSL2. And for this, we're just going to open up a PowerShell and we're going to do WSL minus minus install. And you have to give it the appropriate permissions and it's off to the races. We'll fast forward through this part. It does install Ubuntu by default, certainly the path of res least resistance, which I'm all about. Okay, the system needs to be rebooted, so I'm going to stop my recording for that. Now we're going to install Miniconda. And I recommend just let's go ahead and install the version that they're specifically asking for here on TensorFlow. Anything that gives me fewer headaches is a good thing. So let me go ahead and I am going to launch PowerShell. And let's run the first, the wget command. That is simply going to download it. So let's pop into WSL and we'll download it. That goes relatively quick, at least it did for me. Now we will run the shell command that actually installs it. Okay, I'm gonna press enter to continue. Yes, we wish to install. And we'll install it to that path. Fast forward through this. Yes, we would like to initialize the shell. We'll see why that is important here. Right now it's not really telling me my virtual environment, but it should be telling me that we're in base. So if I exit from WSL and then I go back into WSL, you'll see that we now have base here. So let's go ahead and create one of those environments. So we're gonna use this next command here and kind of create 
a Python 3.9 environment called TF. We'll press enter and we're creating a virtual environment. Now realize this is a virtual environment inside of a virtual environment because we're already in WSL. So we'll fast forward through this and it's done. So to activate this environment, we do conda activate TF. And now we're in that TF environment. Now, if you're gonna run the GPU, run this section here. NVIDIA SMI, we did that previously, but let's just make sure it's still there. And there it is. Now notice we're in CUDA 12. There's gonna be multiple CUDAs installed, but just one graphics driver. This is your graphics driver that we installed previously. And you, can, you only got one of those per system. If you upgrade it, you upgrade it. Always keep your graphics driver on the latest one, but CUDA depends. CUDA 12, this alone would give you a problem because TensorFlow doesn't currently support CUDA 12. CUDA 12 is very new as of the recording of this video. So what we're gonna do here is install CUDA 11, not system-wide, not even WSL-wide, but for this TF environment that we have here. And you'll see we're, we're in TF, so we're gonna paste that in, we're gonna run it, and it's going to install all of these various little libraries that we need to actually make use of the GPU. Fast forward through this, this takes a moment. Yes, we wish to proceed. This takes maybe a little bit, so we'll fast forward. Okay, now we have CUDA and the other necessary stuff installed. This next part that they ask for, this is making these available to everything else in your environment, such as TensorFlow, because this specifies the path. If you just run this here, it's going to be good for your current run, but you go reboot your computer, come back later, and nothing will work. So I recommend doing this, and this part will set you up so that it automatically runs this command when you come back in. So we're gonna run these one by one, put that in, and then we're gonna run this little command that actually adds the path command so that it gets executed every time you boot up your WSL environment. So we're gonna copy this part, we're gonna upgrade pip, let's make sure that we get the correct version of TensorFlow. And then what they're asking you to do here Notice they're saying pip install TensorFlow 2.11. I don't suggest you go and install 2.11 unless this page is saying to do it. This part, this is actually what sends most people off the rails. Is if you're not putting these versions on, you would have ended up with CUDA 12, which is not going to work with TensorFlow 2.11 or, or these kind of things. So the, keep, keep your Rubik's Cube aligned and make sure you're in TensorFlow TF and we'll run it and it's downloading and installing. Let's fast forward through this. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now they have the verify install. Don't just do the verify CPU install unless you just installed the CPU and that's fine. We're gonna do the GPU one, but before we do that, I am going to reboot the machine. All right, we are back. So let's uh, see if this works. This is where stuff goes wrong, if it's gonna go wrong. Open up PowerShell, and there's PowerShell. Let's do WSL so that we're in WSL. So here we are in base, we're gonna activate TF, and there we are. We're gonna run this command here for the GPU. Paste it, and press enter. Oh my gosh, an explosion of errors. Don't worry, you're fine. TensorFlow just likes to vomit useless crap at you, and this is what you should pay attention to down here. You should have this physical device and your GPU, GPU zero. If you've got multiple GPUs, you'll see them here as well. So this, this is good, you're done. If you've gotten errors, look at what it's complaining about up here. All right, you're all set up. What's the next thing to do? Subscribe to my channel so that you get plenty of things that you can now do with your freshly installed TensorFlow. You might also be interested in running TensorFlow with Docker. I've got another video talking about that. And that sometimes saves you some of the trouble of the software rot and things breaking after you've installed this.